uh, grew up in a Muslim house, uh, family very much uh, obedient to, to the Muslim faith. Uh, when I was five, went to school, at the same time went to the mosque, and I've been taught all about Islam. When I think about Allah, God, I, don't, I did not see him as this wonderful God, the creator, the, the loving caring of all people and, and all creation. I saw him as this big, giant guy that's ready to crush me. I couldn't see myself going to heaven. Not, not according to the Quran and all that teaching. I couldn't weigh my good deed against my bad deeds and see, still see myself winning, outweighing the bad deeds. There was no way I asked myself those questions. Where, where did my spiritual life go? Where is God now? What does he look at me and sees? What does he see when he sees me? What must he be thinking of me? Am I totally cut off from him because of all the sins that I committed? Is there a way back? How can I get back? One day I was offered a place to live with these Christian people. And I took the opportunity. The Christian family I moved in with had love for me. At first sight, I thought they were just uh, pretending. They were really good actors. And sooner or later, you, I'm going to find out. The truth is going to come out. Uh, then I found out the love that, that is shared between them as a family was extended to me. And it wasn't merely a natural love, as we call it, eros or filios, but it was a love that they proclaim it was from God. And I couldn't believe that, how can God give them something that He didn't give me? What do they have so precious that I don't? I saw in their lives the commitment that I didn't have. I saw how the father of their family wake up early morning, goes to work until at night. When he comes back, they reunite, they unite around the table and they hold hands and they pray or ask the children to sing a song to bless the food. I saw how he never raised his voice upon his wife or children. I saw how they spoke and the place of the woman, how she is honored. She had a voice to speak. She had really wonderful things to teach those children. And when she spoke, she, she made sense. She was intelligent, educated. I, I was faced with a man that would sit with his children and read them Bible and ask them questions at the end. And then they held hands and, and they prayed. I was astonished by this discovery to me, to my spiritual life. It was a, a, a light that shed on me. So I asked questions. And as I hear these Christian people saying to me, you need a savior. They say, we have the remedy for your disease, for your sickness. And that's when I start asking questions. So I went back to the Quran. One day I was given uh, uh, two, three, four volumes of a man, his name is Sayyid Qutb. Sayyid Qutb, he is the man that translated the Quran. As I read, I found that every reference he had to, almost every reference, was leading to the Bible. He referred to John, the, the apostle. He referred to Paul. He referred to... And that's when my questions start raising again. I say, why? We Muslims believe that the, the Bible is corrupted and we don't take it in account as of uh, true statements in it. Why is this man referring to it to enhance his explanation of the Quran? That also shed a light in my mind. I'm saying, this man is a glorious man in the Muslim world. Everybody respects him. And he is referring to the Bible as a point of referral. That means it's really deep down 
uh, true. The next thing, one day, I went out to the woods where I lived at 11 at night. As I got down on my knees, I looked up. I looked up to the sky and I say, God, if you're truly up there, I don't need to go as you came to Moses and spoke to him and to Jesus and to every one of the prophets. I want you to speak to me directly. I want you to show yourself to me. And this is my genuine question. Lo and behold, 30 days went by. The day I was moving out of that, that Christian home, I had mentioned to them on a Saturday, I am going to get my check on Monday out of the company I worked for, and I'm moving back where I came from. I don't think I'm going to follow you guys. I don't think I'm going to be Christian. It's not me. I'm Muslim. I'm Arab. I will die Muslim and die an Arab, and that's all I care for. I left it that way. Nevertheless, Monday came. This lady that shared her heart in the gospel with me, she had the habits of throwing tapes in my car radio. I drove that Monday at 2 o'clock. And as I am driving, a tape started. And usually I take those tapes and throw them in the back seat. And sometimes I listen to them. But I've never had the man speaking in that tape. I felt him directly speaking to me that time. And all he mentioned, he said, you want the love of God, don't you? And I just start weeping. I said, yes, I want that. That love of God. I need that love of God. If I know I, I can give my life for that love of God, if I know that this God that I believe in will love me regardless of how many sins I committed and He will wash all of them away and take them, I, I'm glad to, to be His servant. I went back to my Christian home that evening. I did not tell them anything, but they saw me as I came in. And they've never seen me cry with tears. That day, they understood something I did not understand. They hugged me and cried with me from 10.30 till 2 in the morning. So Sunday came, and I went to the church. I never forget that time. I went to the church, and I stand up. The pastor looked at the congregation, and he said, we have a brother here who wants to share something with you folks. I got up. I didn't share with you, with them as I shared with you. I had no clue what was going on. All I said, now I believe in your Jesus. He's a truly Savior. He gave me peace. He took my sins away and I believe it in, deep down in my heart. And I just wept. I look up, and the whole congregation was weeping with me. And one day, the sister that led me to the Lord with her husband, um, her brother died, and I went to their funeral. And after the funeral, they had a, a gathering where to feed the, 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 the people, the strangers, the people that come from far. And, uh, I, I walked to the, to the reception afterwards and people started lighting up and coming to me and they shake my hand and they said, you must be TJ. I say yes. They give me a hug and they whisper, I've been praying for you. And after five and ten people, 20 people saying that to me I knew that God did not save me because of me but because of the prayers of those people now, six months later I was in a Bible University two years later 
I was uh, serving the Lord and I'm still serving the Lord. I went to the mosque where I used to pray. You know, and I looked at the Muslims and I saw what they're struggling with, merely doing what they're supposed to do, what they're taught to do, duty after duty. Nothing comes from the heart. There is nothing to change that heart. You can't give love when you don't have it. You can't have peace and give it and share it when you don't know what peace means. And yet you say, Assalamu Alaikum, peace be upon you all the time. And yet there is no peace in your heart to give. If the Muslim world will open their mind to just read without any, without any judgment, they will, I promise you, uh, millions of Muslims will believe in Jesus. I believe I am Muslim, meaning I, I am submissive. Islam means submission. And being Muslim means submissive. Yes, I am Muslim, but to the Lord Jesus. To Allah through Jesus. That's who I am. I learned the peace of Islam, that Islam calls peace. Peace upon you until you disagree with me. Peace upon you until you disobey me. Peace upon you until something goes wrong or you do something wrong. Or you sin. Then there is no peace. If I choose not to follow this religion, Islam, Therefore, I'm an apostate and there's no peace upon me. True peace of Jesus does not come that way. True peace is not sold or, or bought. The Lord Jesus gave it freely on the cross. And he said, my peace I give to you. And no other peace, nobody can stand beside that. Or nobody can take that away from you.